Yeah, mate, the bloody airport. What used to just be a place for people to get on and off of planes has somehow morphed into a giant shopping centre that's allowed to charge double the price for things because there are planes outside. Yep, for some reason, the closer a packet of chips is to an aeroplane, mate, the more expensive it gets. I don't really understand the maths behind it, but I reckon we're fucked once Woolworths figures out they can sting us 90 bucks for a packet of burger rings if they park a couple 737s out the front. I'd rather get on a plane at Woolies anyway, you know? Got a better chance of getting on the fucking thing without some bloke in a neckerchief telling me if he puts me suitcase on the plane it's gonna fucking nosedive into the Pacific Ocean because I've accidentally packed an extra sock. Now I've got to spend 45 minutes airing me bonds out and squeezing toothpaste onto the floor of the terminal trying to make weight on this fucking thing. And by the time I get back up to the front of the line, they tell me, sorry mate, the fucking wings have just fallen off the plane we we're gonna stick you on. Gives us a couple hours to glue them back on. Now I've only got seven and a half hours until me flight leaves, so I might as well mull around the duty-free area, have a look at a couple of pairs of $750 wireless headphones, and the entire country supply of Prince Harry's autobiography. It's only ever been picked up once in the past 12 months because some bloke thought it was a book about Bronson from Round the Twist. Attention all Qantas customers, look, we have managed to glue the wings back onto the plane, but unfortunately all the wheels have now fallen off. Uh, we do have our head technician pumping up the replacements at the moment, but it will take us a couple hours as he keeps running out of breath. Cheers. Oh, fuck this, mate. Time to head upstairs and pound half a $78 microwaved rooster roll into me guts and see if I can make it to the bathrooms without shitting myself. Featuring special guest, shirtless ethnic man giving himself a sponge bath with wet paper towel in the sink. After completely blacking out in the bathrooms, I finally wake up on the plane, and the second I click my seatbelt together, four different kids simultaneously shit and spew themselves in what I can only describe as an act of terror on Australian soil. Luckily, humanitarian aid is immediately deployed in the form of six individual Pringles and a five second look at a sheet of paper with a 600ml pump printed on it. Alright. Packed this one yourself, did you, mate? No, that's how I got it. Huh? That's how I bought it. You bought a suitcase full of someone else's stuff? Yeah. No, there's a bloke out in the front selling them off this, like, big trolley in the car park. No, he's got, like, a, like a yellow vest on with a red kangaroo on the front. And, uh, yeah, he just tows it all around with this little white car with no roof on the top. Hmm. So if you find anything in there, it's not mine. Why would I make that up? Three undeclared bananas, mate. We're gonna have to chop your head off. Ah, oh, fuck! Yeah, mate, if you can't beat them, join them. That's what I always say, you know, and I'm loving it so far. Only been with Qantas for a couple of weeks now, mate, but already done a bit of everything so far. Started off doing maintenance on the planes, you know, but opened the toolbox on my first day and the only thing in there was a roll of duct tape and a set of rosemary beads. Apparently we're supposed to just tape them up, do 30 Hail Marys and send them off, which uh, just made me a bit uncomfortable. Be honest, but uh, no, I think I've really found me calling as a baggage handler. You know, I actually got employee of the month the other week for outstanding service in the line of duty, and they actually offered me a big promotion too. You know, bumping everyone up the ladder because the CEO stopped turning up or something. I don't know, but I don't even blame him. You know, CEOs these days only exist so the company has someone to pin it on when it all goes wrong. You know, I reckon you're gonna be pretty fucking stupid to get talked into that. Yeah, look, I don't actually know who that is, Alan Joy. Is that the bloke that runs Joyce Mayo? Yeah, he done me a mad deal on a dishwasher like nine years ago. Good bloke. That's not him. Oh, fuck him then. Any other questions? Cheers for watching guys, hope you liked the vid. This one was a monster, okay? A lot of planning, a lot of back and forth, trying to figure out how to film this in an actual airport without getting arrested by the fucking federal police. So shout out to Revolut for sponsoring today's vid and helping make it happen. Now if you're trying to save a bit of coin, mate, or you're just trying to get on top of which betting app it's getting sent to, then Revolut might be for you. From rounding up loose change on your daily blue V purchase, you know, to automatically setting aside some of your paycheck each week so you don't spend it all on some Croatian dog race at three in the morning, they got you covered. Every account comes with a free card, mate, so you can pay like a local in over 158 gallon countries, including Bali. So to find out more, mate, and see heaps more features, check out the link below, and I'll see you in the next one, because uh, I've got a Slovakian dog race that's about to start. I've got to put money on this thing. Will the keys to the Commodore do? Sick of being abused. Can't even enjoy me fucking night.